हरि Confusion. Three parts during Chandrata. So, what's our performed? 
because of the previous vasanas, previous embedment, embedment of various vasanas in the uh, jiva, in the causal body of the jiva. So they produce various karmas, various desires constantly, every day, and the jiva goes to fulfill that in the world. So this is the first state of jiva. Now coming to second state, when you lie down, when you want go to sleep, the starting point of sleep is swapana. Swapana means dream state. I have given it in the brackets as D, dream state. Here in the dream state, the difference between the wake up state and the dream state is during the dream state, the external stimuli is completely stopped. There is no external stimuli from the world that reaches the jiva. That means the jnanendriya, the karmendriya, they all are withdrawn inside through prana into the mind. It is only the mind that is going to perform, the antakarna, mind consisting of manas, chidda, buddhi, akanta. These alone create a world. This world is created by the mind during the state of Swapana. When it goes from Jagrata to Swapana, they lie down in a bed. They think sleep is going to come because of softness of the bed. That is not the truth. Swapana is a state in between Jagrata and deep sleep state. I'm going to describe this state a little bit more as we finish covering it and then go into the second topic today. So Swapana is the reflection or Swapana is, can be considered as a state where the jiva takes all its experiences of the Jagrata and produces the same during Swapana. So in Swapana, you still have the rivers, you still have the buildings, you still have the world. And during the deep, during the dream state, when the jiva is in dream state, the world, the world it has created is absolutely real. While it is the dream state, the dream is real. The man kills the guy he, with a dagger, there is blood dripping in the dagger, his hands are all blood. He is bloody, he has created and he is panics and he goes through all kinds of emotions just like the wake up state. Similarly, when he does a happy job, all these things or every one of them inside the dream is nobody but the dreamer. You have to keep that very clearly in mind. You may come into my dream, you may appear in my dream, but you cannot enter into my dream and you cannot dream my dream. Only I can dream my dream. So in my dream, when you are thus coming into my dream or appear in my dream as an object, it is me who is you in the dream. So the dream state is very important. Every object in the dream state is nobody but the dreamer. So he creates his own emotions, psychological factors and he goes through the suffering and the enjoyment. This is the dream sleep state. So, with the dream sleep state, after he finishes certain dreams, he is automatically drawn deep into Sushupti, a third sleep state called the deep sleep state. This state, nothing works. Ego, ego is dropped. All the mind and the manas, everything come to rest. He is completely actionless. So, he is the closest to what is called the happiness state, the state of Turiya, which is fourth. That means he is coming very close to the Atman. But since ego is dropped, mind doesn't work, intellect is not there and so on, he is completely engulfed in ignorance. The deep sleep state is a state of ignorance where pleasure is enjoyed. What you cannot do, yourself does it for you. The God, the Atman does it for you. It withdraws the Jiva from Jagrata into Swapana and then into Sushubdhi. In Sushubdhi, 
Only the pranas work. The deep prana works, the mind doesn't work, so there is no world, no nothing, absolutely nothing, it is all, you cannot call it sunya because there is a witness conscious which is awake, which is atma. So that jiva takes a completely rest in that state. It's a total rest. It is not rajos, tamos, the gunas are also go to rest, the avastas go to rest, everything goes to rest. So the man likes that state because in that state he gets the maximum uncaused bliss without a reason. That is the highest bliss. In that state he doesn't have any reasoning, he doesn't perform any action as I said before. So every man wants to, after sleep, when he wakes up after sleep, he simply says, Oh, I slept very well, but I don't know what happened. I don't know who, who, who he was. He doesn't even know who he is when he is sleeping. His Nama Rupa is dropped and he is only in Satchitananda, the state of existence, knowledge and bliss. But knowledge here is surrounded completely by ignorance. So he is in state of existence, ignorance and bliss. This is the third state. This happens every day to every jiva. So it is not that a soft bed that gives you a good sleep. It is sleep has to arrive by itself. There are people who lie in soft bed in the air conditioned room and hoping to sleep. But they have some kind of a problem inside them in the mind and they never get that sleep. So they have sleepless nights. So they miss the Shushumdi. And the next day it reflects on the Jagrata. So, this is the normal worldly people's cycle. I'm going to say to what happens to an Advaita, a Vedanta practice Vedanta and Advaita. But before I go there, I have to give up, give a little bit information about what I have written here as Turiya. Turiya means a state that is beyond these three states. Turiya means number four. But the four has got no significance here. Jagrata, Swapana, Sushupti are considered as three states. So the state of Turiya is the fourth. This Turiya state, you please keep it as it is timeless, there is no time in the Turiya state, there is no space, and there is no causation. All the three things belonging to Maya is completely not there. That means it is a state of absolute. This state is the state that, that is the basis or the beginning or the container of all the three states. I am going to go to the next figure here. For a worldly man, he never reaches this state because he doesn't know that Atman exists. He has no idea of soul. So he is right just rotating between these three states, Jagrata, Swapana and Sushupti. Whereas, when people sit down to meditate or use yoga, both Vedanta meditation and yoga meditation, they try to reach the Turiya state. So, as a picture here, I have drawn, let me explain a little bit. W means wake up state. From wake up state, you go to a state called Swapana. Here, the beauty of that is, when you lie down to sleep, sleep automatically comes to you. All your angas, all your 24 cosmic principles are withdrawn by the prana into the mind. There is no frontier. Keep this in mind. Very important. We never know when wake up state ended and Swapana state started. This is the beauty. In wake up state, the world experiences all exist, but in Swapana state, the same reflection of that wake up state, or the day before, or the day before, or some other day in the past, that alone enters the Swapana state. And the Jiva experiences, creates experiences. It acts as everybody. If a dog is there in the dream, the dog is nobody but the dreamer. If uh, his wife is there in the dream, his wife is nobody but himself. So everything in the dream, 
So there is that what is called Advaita in the this, uh, so should be state itself because he is the only one existing. Advaita says Brahman is one without a second. So let us move from uh, Sushubdhi into deep sleep state. Uh, from the Swapana into deep sleep state called Sushubdhi. Swapana state lasts, we never know when. Because we never know the starting of the dream and we never know when the dream ends. And we never know the duration of the dream. This is beautiful. This is really something that uh, you have no control over. You may dream a 50 year of your lifetime in 20 minutes. But in the 20 minutes, the 50 year will go as 50 years. So time is a, a creation of the mind. This also is another factor that proves that. So time is not an external entity as such, like the Mahabhutas. But time is a creation of the mind. Which mind? Not only individually as your mind, but collectively as cosmic mind. So it belongs to Maya. Time belongs to Maya. Similarly, space belongs to Maya. Space is also a concept of the mind. In dream, dream, sleep, in dream state, you may fly. You may jump from a tall building without getting hurt. The space it loses its property and so it also becomes a creation of the mind. So in, in uh, dream, dream state itself, we are losing all our absolute and we are in the state of illusion and illusion and confusion automatically. But the amount of experience of various emotions of jiva is true. So you have to keep that in very clearly in mind. If a jiva gets his son, the death, death, death of his son in the dream, he weeps. If he gets something good, he inherits money, he feels happy. And he has bad dreams. So suddenly he wakes up in fear. If a tiger suddenly appears in his dream. So, we have talked about this, a little bit about social media. Uh, a little bit about I'm sorry, uh, Swapana. I keep, on, I keep on changing Sushupri and Swapana. Swapana. So from Swapana, we go into deep, deep sleep state. Here again, the frontier, that means the crossover point, when it stopped dreaming and when it entered into deep sleep state, is completely not under our control. Not under anybody's control. It is under control of Maya. The goodness that you have, the peacefulness you have at the wake up state decides upon your uh, deep sleep state. Extreme acquaintance, they say dream as well, wake up state has got a lot of adjuncts. The jiva goes through various experiences. Similarly, the dream state also the jiva goes through my mental, physical, intellectual uh, emotions. In deep sleep state, they also have what is called three different states. This is extremely, extremely informative for you, not in all the books, but in specific Advaita Vedanta, in the highest Mayavatins description. Even when you have deep sleep, you, because of the power of your karmas, you may have a good sleep, you may have a better sleep or you may have a sound sleep. So, depending upon whether you have, every day you touch the deep sleep state, no doubt. But when you come out, you may still feel tired, you may still feel aggravated and so on. So, it is not full. But a happy man, when he enters into deep sleep state, when he comes out, he is completely refreshed, rejuvenated. What you cannot do, God does it for you. The Atman yourself does it for you. So that is uh, deep sleep state. From deep sleep state, again you go through the same process, come out of a swapana, through swapana, back into the real time world. So in the deep sleep state, you are Atman, that is the witness conscious is awake. It gives you, it constantly watches you as the jiva goes to sleep and then 
at the right time after a certain amount of hours, a rada of the thing comes from the causal body and wakes up the jiva. So the jiva immediately gets woken up. He goes through the same dream process uh, uh, from the deep sleep to swapana to wake up state. So this is the normal procedure for an ordinary non-spiritual worldly man. Now I am going to talk about a yogi or an aspirant or you for that matter in this uh, juncture. You go through all the three but at the same time since you know three are, now you can sit in yoga meditation. When you sit in yoga meditation, as you know the parts of yoga meditation, the first one is uh, yama, dama, which you practice every day. So there is nothing going down and then on top of that you, you have a good seat which is asana and you, you pra control, use your prana to control both the prana and the mind. Prana is rajosic because of the movement of prana, bana, vyana, udana and samana. Whereas the mind is purely sattvic. The prana operates the mind. So during the normal meditation time you skip the Swapana state and you skip the Sushupti state. But whatever the qualities or whatever that is happening in that, you try to do that in Chakra. That means in Swapana state, your you Nanendriyas and your Karmendriyas don't work. So you withdraw using Prana, using Pratyahara, which is a term for the Ashtanga Yoga, that means withdrawal of all the senses into the mind and keep the mind steady and the mind comes under the buddhi. If you can do that in Jagrata, you have skipped the Swapana state. Now, if you concentrate on a single thought, only a single thought minus all the other worldly thoughts, the single thought normally for Advaitin is Brahman or the Atman. So if you concentrate on the Atman, your mental process is like a wave. It constantly takes some kind of a wave every time. Every time each wave is different. Each wave is different from the other. So every thought is a wave. Every thought is a wave. This normally is the function of the mind. The mind, no matter what, whether you sit in a cave or whether you sit in the plane or whether you sit in the marketplace or whether you go to the temple, it constantly gives you out a thought. Actually, scientists have proved that there are 16 thoughts compared to 16 breaths of you per minute. So that amounts to about something like 21,000 thoughts every day, approximately you get. Now, if the thought is Similar, that means for a few seconds or few minutes, the same thought is coming. That thought encompasses all these thoughts. So this becomes a wave. This wave, it consists of the same thought coming in. So that is what is called Ekakram. Ek means one, one thought, you constantly repeat that thought mentally. It will appear as if you are statically having one thought. That is one of the higher states in Dhyana. In, in Dharana, you get into Pratyahara, you get up to Asana and Pranayama. Pratyahara, you get into Dharana. Dharana state is this state. After that is Dhyana, after that is Samadhi, which is not in our hands. It is automatically done by the Atman. So, man, what he does is, when he goes into the Ekakram, he crosses the Sushupti state too. Because his mind is no more working except on one thought. His intellect is completely under the control of the mind. The mind is not going out and the eye is now on top in line with that. When you do that, you cross the Sushupti and you reach the Turiya state. Reaching the Turiya state is very easy. Everybody, when you are very deeply involved and very sincerely, devotedly perform spiritual sadhanas, they can enter into Sushupti, uh, Turiya. But to stay there is the problem. Constantly you should be able to stay there from Jagrata 
directly into Turiya, skipping the upper stage. I am going to give that with a different color. Wake up directly to Turiya and Turiya directly to wake up. This is meditation. I even shown it as Turiya to wake up. In this state, these two are crossed. So, what is the difference between Turiya and uh, deep sleep state? Turiya is the state of Samadhi. As you establish yourself, or I have to say, because I am now Jagrata and talking about Turiya, so over a period of time, every 12 seconds is considered as one unit. If you can stay in Turiya with one thought, only one thought without any other thought for 12 seconds you are considered to be starting uh, one unit of meditation. 12 times that 12 is 144 seconds. That is 2 minutes and uh, 24 seconds. That constitutes you to enter into what is called Sarvikalpa Samadhi. If you can do that 12 times more, it becomes 28 minutes. If you can stay continuously 28 minutes, you are already established in Sarvika Samadhi, Sarvikalpa Samadhi, where the identification of the meditator, meditated and meditation, all the three still exist. You can, he can be woken up after much trial by somebody outside or he himself can drop that meditation and come out. If he continues that for 12 more times, that is 5 hours and some minutes, he is in Nirvika Samadhi. Nirvikalpa Samadhi, the highest. The, what happens is Nirvikalpa, that means there is no identification. That means the meditator, the meditated and the meditation, they all combine together and they become unity. He becomes one with the self in that state. In the state of Turiya, where after five and a half hours, it continuously sits with one thought, no other thought at all. That one thought also goes away from it. Finally, he ends up in thoughtless, fearless Brahman. This is the idea of a normal person a to a yogi or a performing aspirant who is devotedly looking for liberation in life. Nirvikalpa Samadhi and Sushupti appear to be the same. Man may be sitting down with his eyes closed, with no movements, and he may be folding his hand, but he is sitting straight with his head, neck, and back, and he is out of the world. For people to come out of Nirvika Samadhi, Nirvikalpa Samadhi, nobody can bring them out. Except a person who has already gone through that Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Only an illumined soul can bring it down. Normal Jagrata people, when they enter into Nirvikalpa Samadhi, they never come back. Their body falls off after 21 days. And they don't even know that. They have become one with Brahman. This is for normal worldly people. But for illumined souls, for avatars, for people who have come with a certain purpose, for the world has taken place for certain reason or purpose, like Shivananda, like Chinnayananda, like Swami Sri Sri Ramakrishna, then Sadasiva Brahmarendra. They all came with a purpose to teach the mankind. So they can go to Nirvikalpa Samadhi and they can bring themselves down with the keeping certain kind of an ego in them as knowledge or devotion, and using that they can come down. But ordinary person loses everything and he becomes one with the universe. It is not, uh, as I said, it's that easy. It is the most difficult and lifetime practice for one. So, let me sum it up. The ordinary person goes through the tree and he, is, uh, uh, he considers those as real. Whereas a person of this portion, he skips these two from Jagrata and goes to Turiya. And Turiya is a state of Calmness. Surya is a state of Satchitananda. So, the dream and the Swapana doesn't need, he doesn't need those. He is already juvenated. He is already in bliss. 
he is already in the deep conscious state. So he, for him coming out of Surya, he will never feel tired or he will never have any dream. Now, I am going to say, if you consider Swapana as a separate state, whatever that happens in Swapana, it happens while you are awake in Jagarada. So Jagarada is an extension of Swapana. Even Jagarada is a Swapana state. Now Swapana it comes from Sushuddhi because they all end up in this way. When you go in this way, they all end up in this end. And for a while they stay there and then they come out of that. They come out of that again. So if you look at it that way, the Sushuddhi state is the basis for wake up and the Swapana. That Sushuddhi state is called the causal state. You are in your causal body. That means you have nothing except ignorance and causal state is considered to be the Ananda Maya Kosha. So you feel bliss in that state. Now coming out, you will come out the same way. Whereas a yogi in the Durya state becomes, Durya becomes the base of all the states, including Sushupi. Durya. So it is the basis, it is the basic concept from which we have the other three states. So it is the chief Sachitananda state which everyone wishes to obtain. And Adi Shankara has written extremely lot more things about Turiya and he prays to that Turiya. The state of Turiya where the self shines in its own glory, let that Turiya state protect all of us. May God protect all of you. Om Guru Pyo Namaha Ari Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya